Hello, and welcome back to the fourth section of Articulate Storyline Training Series. In the last video, we saw what states are. We have also seen all the text, pictures, shapes, and interactive objects that can be included in the states. In this video, we will learn how to create new states and how to use them. The interactive objects like buttons has a bunch of pre-built states, whereas other objects like pictures, shapes, and text don't. But we can add as many states as we want for an object. To see the states of an object, select an object and open the states panel. Then, click this Edit States button to open states view. All the other objects on the slide are grayed out, which means we are inside the state view of this object. However, you can turn off this effect by unchecking this option in case if you don't want this indication. I find it useful, so I will leave it enabled. Next, we have these four new buttons on the top. We can click the buttons to add more states to this object. Alternatively, we can click this duplicate state icon, which will create a copy of the selected state. To delete a state, simply click this trash icon. If you made changes to the state and you want to revert the changes, then click this reset button. Let's say I want to add hover effect to this button so that when the mouse is over the button, the color changes. Here we have a drop down menu with few built in states. We can either use these or create our own by just typing here. So let's add a mouse over state and change the button color to orange. Let's preview and see if it works. It didn't work because we have added a state, but we didn't explicitly tell Storyline when to change this object's state. Let's go back and attach a trigger in order to change the state to mouse over. But what if we could do it without adding a trigger? Well, we can do it using built-in states. Since we are trying to create a hover effect, we can use this built-in hover state. Let's change it to blue color, and hit Preview to see if it works. Now it works. OK, let's go back and add few more pre-built states to this button. We have Down State. This state gets activated when the user click and hold an object. We'll give it a sky blue color. Now let's add a visited state as well. This state gets activated once the user click the object. The object will remain in the visited state until slide resets or if a trigger is attached to change the state. We'll give a purple color for this state. And then we have selected state. This state is very useful when you have two or more buttons on the slide. When the user selects a button, then the other button with selected state should get deselected automatically. Let's give this state a different color and later we can create this functionality using triggers. I will demonstrate how to do it in a moment. Before that, we need a second button with similar states in order to test it out. So I am going to show you a shortcut for this. You can click this Done Editing States button, and then in order to add all these states to our second button, we can simply select this button, then go to Home and select Format Painter. Then click on this second button. This will apply all the states to the second button. Next, we need to right click on this button and select Button Set. Make sure both the buttons belong to the same button set. So I am going to set both buttons to button set 1. All right, let's preview it. As you can see, it changes to blue color when the mouse is over, and upon click and hold, the down state is activated. As soon as the click is released, selected state is activated. Now if I select the other button, the first button gets deselected automatically and the visited state is activated. If we go back and select this button again, the second button gets deselected. Next, we have disabled state. This state can only be activated when we attach a trigger to change the state to disabled. We will see this in the upcoming videos. Let's move on to the next built-in states. There are few built-in states specific to drag and drop interactions. Let me create a freeform drag and drop slide so that we can see these states in action. Now, in a drag and drop interaction, we need a draggable object and a drop target. I am going to add a circle as the drag item and then two squares as the drop targets. 
Let me name them. Now let's go ahead and add states to these objects. We have a drag over state here. This state gets activated when any other object is dragged over to this object. Let's give it a different color and then click Done. Now let's apply this state to our second drop target using the Format Painter. Next, we have Drop Correct and Drop Incorrect states. As the name suggests, Drop Correct gets activated when the drag item is dropped on the correct target and vice versa. Let's add green color to the correct state and red for incorrect. Now we need to set correct drop target to our drag item. The correct drop target will be the first square and the second square will be an incorrect drop target. We don't need a feedback for this as of now, hence selecting none for the feedback. I want to see the correct and incorrect states as soon as I drop in the target. So, I will uncheck this delay option under drag and drop options. Let's preview and check out our interaction. Now as we drag the circle onto the target, the drag over state is activated. When I drop it on the incorrect target, the circle turns red. And it turns green when I drop it on the correct target. This way, we can build many cool interactions using these built-in states without adding any triggers. Although these built-in states allow us to build many interactions on the go, they might not be sufficient for complex interactions. For complex interactions, we can add our own states and control them by adding triggers. We will see how to do so in the next video.